Is the making of money that important that you should ignore everything else in your life so that you can work to make the money? What does Dr. Renee say? No, obviously. But that's a hard pill to swallow if you are a pre-med student or if you're a medical student and you're just trying to get through. I've always wanted to be a doc. I am here to dedicate my hours to a patient, uplift my community. What are you talking about? But there is a difference between having a career and having money. Renee's cooking. Mm. The aroma is a bit special. Okay. <laughs> cooking in the kitchen. This episode is brought to you by Set for Life Insurance. Listen, docs. One of the first steps we took to pay off our student loan debt was realizing we paid way too much for our disability insurance. That all changed when we found Set for Life Insurance. They helped us with a customized insurance policy that met our needs and most of all, budget. To learn more, check out setforlifeinsurance.com. Did you know Locum's docs make on average 33% more than employed docs? Got your attention now? So if you're considering Locum tenants either full-time or on the side, you probably have a question or two or maybe even 20. Locumstory.com is packed with unbiased information and tools to see what the trends are in your specialty and even make a decision if Locums is right for you. My advice, make locumstory.com the go-to place to learn more about locum tenants. That's locumstory.com. What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Docs Outside the Box. This is episode 357. I'm your host, Dr. Nee. I am joined by Dr. Oh, Renee. You've actually done that before. No, I haven't. I'm just going to call it out. Now, you've done that before. You going to think you knee and sing a melody, Dr. Renee. Did you miss my... Alfred, she stole that from Martin. Did you miss my... Uh-uh. Oh, excuse me. Okay, respect the host. That is the episode where Martin meets, um, what's his name? Varnell Tommy, Hill. Varnell Hill. Tommy Varnell Hill. Hill. The Varnell Hill Show. That's a great episode. One of the best episodes. You interrupted episode. my intro. This is why you didn't know what I was doing. Mm, that's what it is. That's okay. what it was. All right. Well, folks, I want to thank you all for listening on the podcast. People who are watching on YouTube, welcome. Was good where y'all been. We really appreciate you all. And listen, wherever you're listening to this, we always appreciate you and what you'll see this episode is really for you this episode is feedback episode where you know we're kind of talking about some of the comments that we get from instagram or from text to phone and, so and so forth um so we're going to let this roll the second half of this episode will be an actual interview that we have with one of our faithful listeners yes. um he kind of hits us from so many different perspectives um we'll kind of save that for segment two we won't get into that um, but let's jump right into this um, real quick. I am um, from the previous episode, I think from 355. If you guys listen, I did end up making that $40,000 uh, payment to the IRS, which Ooh, was pretty painful. You right? we, you we, right? we, am I right? Are you all right? Are, are we all right? right? Is we all right? <laughs> <laughs> we all sick? Right? Yeah, we. It was painful for us, all right, to make that payment, um, guys. Once again, if you if you didn't catch that episode on three fifty five, I talked about how, for some reason, we did not keep up with our estimated tax payments for the year. So right before April eighteenth, we had to make another large lump, forty one thousand mm -hmm. dollar estimated payment. I prefer to just do it in estimated installments, you know, every quarter, so that there's not this huge large bill. But it is what it is. It's done. It's taken care of. We'll go from there. But yeah, yeah, you look hurt. Yeah, I'm hurt. Pockets hurt. <laughs> Somebody stabbed you in your pockets. <laughs> in your pockets too. I don't understand what is this. Like, your money is my money. My money is your money. You know what I'm saying? I thought you were a prenup. <laughs> well, you ain't signed no prenup. <laughs> exactly. Y'all, mm -mm -mm. <laughs> listen. So if y'all don't know, the reason why me and Renee stopped doing as many interviews as uh, we did last year is mainly because like we live this non-traditional life and there's so many different aspects of our life that I think a lot of people can learn from, from us paying off debt to us doing IVF and failing um, to us leaving our jobs and deciding to go into locums, which mm -hmm. is a form of independent contracting, mm -hmm. right? Um we decided to do all of these different things because 
there's just a certain life, a certain lifestyle that we wanted or that we want. So, you know, we've been podcasting since 2016, Docs Outside the Box. We've been at the top of the charts for business. But in terms of doctor podcasts, you know, we've been up there and we felt like it was time to pivot last year. And we went ahead and teamed up with uh, locumstory.com and created a video series, our first ever video series, which is, you know, basically us documenting Renee getting back into doing locums and what it's like to talk with different locums companies um, using locumstory.com. Right. We documented what it's like to understand like the lingo of locums, understand what it's like to interview, understand all the different assignments that they may have. They may Mm -hmm. have assignments, you know, in all 48 contiguous states. They may have some assignments in other, you know, parts of the United States, you know, in Hawaii and Alaska and so forth, and maybe abroad, who knows? Mm -hmm. Um, But that is what we wanted to do because we wanted to showcase what we do. And I think sometimes, you know, at least for me in the beginning, I was getting so caught up in the energy of other people, Mm. other guests, which I don't want to diss. We appreciate every guest that's been on the show. This is great. But what we find out is that everybody tunes in. They tune in for to listen to either my experience or your experience or our experience. So we really wanted to focus in on that for the show. And then now we have Docs for Hire, which is this video series where we chronicle this. Right. Whether you are a medical student, a resident, if you're a nurse, whatever you are in the healthcare field, this is an opportunity for you to listen to what it's like to take control of your career, ask really poignant questions, mm-hmm. and kind of decide what you want to do with your career. I've been talking on my soap, you know, box for a minute. I'm gonna let you talk because I guess I'm, you know, sometimes I yeah, yeah you like you you about to preach. Yo, man, I'm, can I I'm get feeling. an amen? I'm feeling. <laughs> Alfred play the organ. Alfred play the organ. Ay-ya. Now, should he do praise music or like praise <laughs> dance music? No, 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 not yet, not yet. It's got to be the dan dan like the slow organ. <laughs> anyway, no, I totally agree. I think you know one of the you better things. Agree. Anyway, one of the things that. Um, I've been saying lately because I've get, I've been getting a lot of questions about independent contracting. Both of us, we've been getting a lot of questions about independent contracting. And regardless of whether or not you're in, the, you know, you're independently contracted, the point of work, right? And we talked about this with Ali Abdal. The point of work is to make an income, right? Is is to make money. And the problem with work is that sometimes work actually interferes with all of the other things that you want to do. And so the question is, you know, is the making of money the most important thing that a person should be focused on such that it actually interrupts all of the other things you know, in this person's life, you know, time with their family, time with their friends, recreational time, mental health. Like, is the making of money that important that you should ignore everything else in your life so that you can work to make the money? What does Dr. Renee say? Well, I say no, obviously, right? Like, the making of money is not so important that you should have to interrupt everything in your life. So then what does that mean then? That but, means and, But that's a hard pill to swallow. Before you go on to the next point, mm-hmm. let's just be honest. That's a hard pill for, to swallow for yeah. a lot of people who are listening to the show. Oh, yeah. Particularly if you are a pre-med student or if you're a medical student and you're just trying to get through. Right. And you're realizing, yo, I sacrificed the majority of my 20s to get mm-hmm. to this point. What are you talking about? Like, I've always wanted to be a doc. Like, the last thing I thought about is how I'm going to get paid. I mm-hmm. am here to dedicate my hours to a patient to uplift my community Mm -hmm. um, or, you know, for a career achievement that I've always wanted. What are you talking about? about Right. But there is a difference between having a career and having money. Okay. Right. Career does not equal money. Renee's cooking. (laughs) Cooking in the kitchen. Um, So, yeah, there's a difference, I think, between having a career and having money. Right. Just because you are a doctor. Right. You you, meaning you have a career as a doctor doesn't mean that you need to sacrifice everything in order to make money. Right. That those two are not necessarily one in the same. So the question is, okay, well, what do you do with that? Well, first, you have to understand the concept of control your career, control your life. If you control your career, then you become in control of your life. 
if you give your career to the hands of other people to control, then you don't control your life. Because so how do, how do you give your your career to someone else to control? So you give your career t to other people to control in quite a number of ways, actually. So when I talked with Mandy uh, Santos Woodroff about this, you know, we talked about the... I mean, we got to point out his first name basis now. It's Mandy. Right, but they didn't know. If I just say Mandy, then faithful, they don't know. There are faithful listeners. They okay. should know. Anyway, when I talked with Mandy... Okay, Mandy Wood. It's actually Mandy Woodruff Santos. So when I talked with her, right, she she is you know a negotiations career coach. Um, so when I talked with her, I talked about the you know getting into this trend of you get in, you you know to get to medical school, you basically have to ask somebody to give you opportunity. Then when you get to residency, you hoping that somebody gonna give you an opportunity. Someone's always giving you something. So if you don't break out of that cycle by the time you end residency, then you continue to wait for people to give you things. Right? If somebody's always giving you something, then what are you actually going after? Right? Every time I talk with somebody about a job opening, what do they actually call the job opening? They say, oh, there's this opportunity. That's what they say to me. And I'm like, how do you know that this is an opportunity? This is just a job opening. It only becomes an opportunity when you say it is. But if you, all, if you automatically see it as an opportunity, then what you're saying is that it is advantageous to you to take this job, even if you haven't done all of your research to figure out whether or not it actually is advantageous. So in that way, you are literally giving away your career. You're giving up control of your career because everything that someone presents to you, you see as an opportunity. Right. Okay. Right. So that's how you give your career away. Another way that people give their careers away is that they don't negotiate. If you don't negotiate, then what you're doing is essentially taking a deal that is lopsided towards the employer, right? Or the hiring party. So you have to learn how to negotiate. Otherwise, you're literally giving up all the leverage that you have because, right, when you don't negotiate, it's probably because you see it as someone giving you an opportunity and not you determining whether or not this is an opportunity. That's so, probably so, why you're not negotiating. Okay, so I get that point. Now, in terms of this show, mm -hmm. Docs for Hire, which is on YouTube right now, check it out. The links are in the show notes, guys. And if you're watching on YouTube, it's in the show description below. Tell me how you use that mentality. Give us a little snippet of how you use that mentality and how they can see this on the show. So first things first is I kind of talk about what it is that I'm looking for, right? So, you know, there's, um, and you know, some, some of this is edited, so I, I don't remember everything that's in there, but there is a point at which um, we talk about what kinds of assignments I want. And I talk about the fact that I don't like to do clinic, right? And this is, this is a, this is a longstanding trend for me at this point because I haven't done clinic in maybe about six years. So all of the assignments that I've taken in the last six to seven years, I've blanketly said, I don't do clinic. So whenever I get, you know, an email or a text message from a recruiter, actually, I got one yesterday and it talks about doing clinic. And I'm like, I don't do clinic. That's not an opportunity for me. Right. So it's being very clear about what you want and not feeling like you have to do something. You had your 20s, your 30s or however old you were when you gave up, you know, all the time with your family, your friends and things like that to create the career that you wanted to be to go to medical school and then go to residency. For me, it's like, well, if you took all that time to do that, why wouldn't you craft your career to the best parts of it. And for me, the best parts of my career is being an OB hospitalist. That's what I like about my career. And I'm not going to do anything in my career that I don't want to do. So I think what you're trying to say, so you're saying what you're saying, and I get it. Mm -hmm. I think what the audience should be taking from this is 
there's no such thing as a one size fits all Correct. career. Correct. And it is okay to look at certain job openings as just openings. Mm -hmm. And you can go and interview there and Absolutely. say, hey, listen, I see what the job posting is, but let me be very honest with you. That's not going to work for me because I may need A, I may need um, right. part time or I may need to mm -hmm. be um, I don't want to do clinic. Right. Can you guys accommodate that? Right. And you basically come with them. You come to them with a set of what your negotiables are. Mm -hmm. They will come back and say, hey, <laughs> kick rocks. Right. Or they right. may say, let's play ball. Right. And go from there. Or you may say kick rocks. Right. Right. So the most important thing that I think that you want people to get from this is that you've been very you've learned to be very clear about what you want mm -hmm. from working and what you don't want. Yeah. Right. Clear and intentional. Clear and intentional. So for me, yeah. like the same thing, I think that in my train of work, um, the show's really not, the show's about us. Mm -hmm. The show also focuses on you looking for a job. Mm -hmm. But if they were to focus on me looking for a job as a trauma critical care surgeon, I do trauma, trauma surgery, which is a little bit different than general surgery mm -hmm. and then which is also a little bit different than critical care right, right? so i take care of people in the intensive care unit which is its own separate job mm -hmm. i take care of people and and do gallbladders and do elective surgery which is its own separate job and then mm -hmm. obviously being a trauma surgeon can be its own separate, separate job thing too, yeah. but i think even in that realm people can be very can pick and choose and say mm -hmm. hey look like i just want to do trauma and I see you and that's it. Or, you know, it, it you should be able to determine what you want yes. and be able to effectively, mm -hmm. you know, kind of negotiate that. Right. And whether they come to play ball or they say no and you decide to be like, peace, this is what this show is to let you guys like get to see is that, mm -hmm. you know, like we we what we're doing is not out of the ordinary. It right. may be non-traditional. You may not have. Um, been exposed to this because, you know, it's very rare for an yeah. academic residency program to be teaching their residents how to do something like this. Correct. Right. So yes. that's the reason why we did this is to kind of branch off and show y'all like, you know, we don't just speak it. We actually do it. Yeah. You know, so once again, this video series um, is something that we're really proud of. We work together with locumstory.com. Mm -hmm. They are the sponsor. Um, but we had full control over this. Yes. You know, we worked in collaboration with them and it's on our YouTube channel. Yes, so. it is. It is on the Docs Outside the Box podcast YouTube channel. Um, if you just, you know, if you go there, you'll find the full video um, or or if you, you want a little HBO more. Max. <laughs> or you can check HBO Max. Check it on Max. HBO Max, guys. It's not on get HBO your, get Max. Get your subscriptions ready. <laughs> Don't let people come to us asking for a refund talking about, I ain't seen it on HBO Max. All right. <laughs> HBO, y'all should sponsor this show. Because if we drive your subscription numbers up. Oh, man. Affiliate links. <laughs> hey. Yeah, but if you want a little bit more drama, if you will, um, we'll also have a playlist. So if you just want to watch it kind of you know, segment by segment with kind of recaps after, you know, before every segment, um, you can watch it that way as well. But I think it'll be fun. It's our first, you know, it's our first video series. So we're excited to hear what you guys have to say, good, bad or otherwise. Trust me, um, y'all can't hurt my feelings. Um, I love, love, love feedback um, because it helps us to understand what the audience really wants. Um, and you know, if that's what we want to do, then yeah, we'll take that feedback and make it happen. Yeah. So we'll leave it at that, guys. So um, on Instagram, we're on Instagram as Docs Outside the Box. Are we on Docs Outside the Box podcast or Docs? Outside no, the just box? Docs Outside the Box. So on Instagram, we are on as Docs Outside the Box. Mm -hmm. If you check out some of our newest. Uh, pictures or our newest Post. posts that we're putting up there. We actually put questions that we get from y'all. So a lot of time we get questions from other doctors, from other residents, um, mainly asking us just offhand questions about business, maybe asking us some clinical career, questions. career clinical type questions that are related to like business and so forth. And I just, after a while, I'm like, why don't people, anyway, we're going to start answering these questions on Instagram. So but we want to give you a chance to answer them first, which is why we posted them right. on IG. Right. So this is all collective they're, learning. They're, they're also going to be posted on LinkedIn. Do you put them on LinkedIn? Yeah. The first one I didn't, but then the second one um, post, uh, posted on LinkedIn um, and I believe Facebook as well. So the first post I'm going to talk about right now, that's 
So there's a doctor who we've been talking to who is considering leaving working as an employed doctor and transitioning to telehealth, telemedicine. You know, that's where you meet with people, your patients virtually. And what she's trying to figure out with this person or this entity that she's going to be working with is, should she work as an employed doctor, right? Or should she work as an independent contractor, as a vendor, whatever you want to call it? Basically, she will work with this entity and they will pay her. And the question is, is are they going to pay her as an employee of, the, of their company or just as a vendor yes. or as a, as a contractor? And if that's the case, then that's something that we oftentimes call a 1099, mm -hmm. a, a person who works as a 1099. Someone wrote on the Instagram, one of the comments was, what is a 1099? Mm -hmm. I answer that 1099 basically is a form that a company or someone that you pay, it's a form that you fill out to the IRS. So, for example, let's say Renee was working. Me and Renee were working. Eh, that's not a good example. What? A, a ten, so, basically, it's it's a form that you submit to the IRS. And what it is, is it's it, it directly tells the IRS who you paid. And it's for people that, or it's for things that you pay over $600. Oh my God. <laughs> Let me start all over again. Well, I'm like, wait, where are you going with Disney? So let's just give an example. How about this? It's let's a form, it's a form used no, no, to. No, 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 no. Don't, don't, don't do definitions. I hate definitions. Form used to report income to the IRS <laughs> that is made by people who are not employed. Boom. You really going to read that definition? I actually made that definition up. Okay. No, nobody, nobody cares about definitions. They want to know how does this apply to them. So, for example. I can't right? believe I messed that up. You did. You you really crunched it. I talk about that. this all the time. You crunched it. It's late, though. Yeah. It's late. And, and I'm kind of pissed. And I'm kind of pissed about the. Uh, what? The estimated, the, 40, <laughs> the estimated tax payment. The $40,000. But let's keep it moving. Come on. Let's keep it moving. Okay. So, basically, for example, right? There's the difference between being employed and and being an independent contractor. If you're employed, then you fill out a W-2. Okay? A W-4. Oh, excuse me. No, W-2. No, you fill out a W-4. You no, the, w person, the person who's working fills out a W-2. Wait, you're talking you talk about the person who's working for a company? Yes. No, the person who's working for a company before you start working. Oh, sorry. Company, yes, you're right. You they fill, fill out, out a you W4. Fill out a w -4. You're right. You're right. Then we end, all we all at the end up. of the year when you finish working from in December or yes, in January, then you get a W two. You get a W two. Yeah. Sorry. So when you're working, yes, you're right. When you're working, you fill out a W four, right? When you're working as an employee. Yes. Okay. When you are working as an independent contractor, you you fill out a W-9, right? Correct. Okay. And the difference is that as when you when you fill out a W-4, you are working for that person, right? W-4? Yes. Four. You're working for that person. If you fill out a W-9, you are working with that person. Yes. I mean, I guess. Uh, yeah, you're well, working with. You're not working for that person. That person is not your boss. I got a better example, but keep going. Though. Right. That person is not your boss. So now you as the person who is working either for or with you get paid. Now, when you fill out a W-9 and you are an independent contractor working with that person, you get paid without any taxes coming out. Correct. Right. At the end of the year, when the tax season is, is coming along, that person with whom you work is going to give you a 1099, basically stating how much they paid you over time. If that if they only fill out that form, if they've paid you over six hundred dollars in that year. Yeah, that's fine. I think, right? that's a, I think that's a good example. So the way, the way how I look at it is this: Look, when we made this Docs for Hire series, yes. we hired a Doctors for Hire. Thank we you. we hired a videography. We hired a videographers, right? We, it cost more than six hundred dollars, um, but we paid them wh whatever the cost was. They filled out a W nine, and at the end of the year, we sent them a ten ninety nine. This form gets sent to them saying that hey. We paid you this amount for the year. And then that form also gets sent to the IRS. So the IRS knows everything, right? So when that videography crew does their taxes, 
they have to account for the money that where that money come from where that money come from they have to account for the money that we gave them and kind of figure out where your money go to where your money go to but that's how that works right (laughs) so the question was what was the 1099 Um, I explained it right but I said that that is for anything for people who get paid more than $400 it's actually if you get paid $600 or more yeah I came back and fixed it right so basically if you do any type of freelance work if you do any type of contract work if you get any dividend in payments, right? Or if you get any interest payments. So for the past 10 years, everybody who has crappy interest rates <laughs> for your bank account, you probably weren't getting 1099s, but now the interest rates are going up and you have all these high yield savings accounts and mm-hmm. you're getting 4%, maybe even 5%. You're going to start seeing some 1099 MISCs coming in or 1099 INTs coming in saying that you've received some type of payment in a form of interest. So those are the basic three forms of which someone would get a 1099. Yeah. But when we say that that person is a 1099, that means that they're getting paid Added, they're getting paid um, for doing freelance work, contracted work, and at the end of the year, they get a 1099. Yeah. That's what I mean by that. But these are the type of questions that we're going to start answering on uh, when on we're Instagram. not so tired. When we're not so tired. Good, <laughs> good point. Good point. Let's move to the Magic Mirror segment. So we debuted that uh, several episodes again uh, ago. Mm-hmm. And um, actually, that is our segment where we're giving shout outs to different doctors who are doing some really cool things. Yeah, yeah. Um, the last one, we shouted out Dr. Milhouse, who is a urologist. She just has a TV show on TLC. Mm-hmm. And we also gave a shout out to Dr. Milhouse. Or sorry, to Dr. Burgess. Um, Burgess. Mm-hmm. Derek Burgess, who just crossed over the 100 episode threshold for his podcast. Podcast, after um, taking your course after taking my course um, mm-hmm. which if you guys go to to the show description or if you go to the show notes on the podcast standpoint you can see we got a course an evergreen course where you can learn how to take 10 quick and easy steps to learn how to podcast um, but on textiful right remember you can text us and let us know what's going on you can text us at 833-230-230 Two eight six zero. Doctor Love Anani, who is an ER physician, <laughs> wrote in after seeing that segment and just said that he was listening and he appreciated that segment oh, nice. and um, wanted to give us props on that. Also, what he said is in that same episode, towards the end, the last segment, we were talking about Envision Healthcare or Envision Staffing, Mm -hmm. which is one of the staffing companies out there. But about two months ago, they missed some. um, They missed uh, what's the word I want to use? They wanted they missed a distribution. Was it a not a distribution? I think it was like a loan payment. They missed. Yeah, I right. forget exactly what you said. But yeah, they, they were supposed to make some sort of payment and they didn't make it. And private whoever is backing them from private equity was like, yo, um, that has nothing to do with us. <laughs> that's not like a you problem, not a me problem. And Vision was like, see what happened was, right? Like my mom's uh, car payment came due and then, you know, the check didn't come in. And the private equity firm was like, listen. They ain't got nothing to do with us. Yeah. <laughs> he wants our money. Yo, it was like Smokey, yo. <laughs> Smokey and Worm. <laughs> playing with my money is like playing with my emotions. Wow. We worm. want worm. our <laughs> money. Why is he walking away? It's so, the principality of the thing, Envision. So it looks like Envision may be in trouble. But the other reason why Dr. Love also contacted us because he's an ER doc and I asked him I was like so how do you work with your hospitals so Dr. Love is actually a part of an ER group that contracts their doctors out to a hospital Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so the hospital doesn't deal with individual ER docs right they deal deal with with an entity a company and this company employs or right. maybe contracts these doctors mm-hmm. and then they have that type of relationship with the hospital. So yeah. he just wanted to clarify that. So that's just something that um, I think is really interesting. Yeah. Um, so once again, if you guys want to participate in this show, one of the best ways is by sending us a message through Textable. Yeah. 833-230-2860. Um, but listen, we got to take a break so that we can come back and let y'all hear this conversation that we had with Dr. Excuse me. With Jamar, one of our faithful (laughs) listeners of the show. Let's go ahead and take a break. We'll be right back. Backdrop. 2012, finishing my fellowship in Miami, and no decision bigger than where and how I was going to start working on my own. And there it was, the fork in the road. Being employed versus something I had never heard of before, locum tenants. So I decided to go the locums route, and I had a ton of questions then. I stumbled a bit. But eventually, I was able to stand on my own, and I have been working locums 
over the past 10 years. Now, what about you? If you're considering locums, you probably have hella questions just like I did. Like, who covers my malpractice? Do I really have control over how often I work? And what are the tax implications? Now, lucky for you, locumstory.com has the answers you need. It's packed with unbiased information and advice from docs just like you. And there's nothing to sell here. It's just a simple resource for information, like finding out what's the average pay rate for your specialty. There's even a quiz to see if locums is right for you. So listen, take my advice. Locumstory.com is the perfect place to start if you want to learn more about locums. That's locumstory.com. Okay, we are back. Um, this is something I'm really excited about. So for the past year, actually, we've been communicating with a very faithful listener. His name is Jamar, Jamar Cromwell. And um, we decided to talk with him, mm -hmm. right? So he's yep. been texting us on Textful, talking from anything from the fact that he tried Factor Meals, which mm -hmm. is what I use to eat. It's like a meal delivery service, a meal prep service that I use when I'm on locums. It's great. Um, he's texted us on, you know, tips with me switching from my laptop yes, on a PC yes, to did. being on a Mac, um, which low-key, this has been a great investment. Ah! Mac, the MacBook blows anything on the PC. It blows it out. It's amazing. Oh, I love it. I love it. so now, okay, so this is not a PC house anymore. Um, we don't have any PCs in this house, so yeah, we actually don't. Um, but yeah, so he he was a part of that. <laughs> he was a part of that, and he just legit like is always Ooh, writing it. Jamar, questions. you done made Doctor Nee lose his religion up in here. Oh, yeah. Okay, his oh, yeah. PC religion. I love this Apple. It's great. I'm never going back to a PC. <laughs> You know, but hey, it is what it is. Oh um, my goodness. It is what it is. Um, but what you guys are going to hear is an excellent conversation that we wanted you all to hear. Real quick, Jamar is a non traditional pre med student. Yep. He is in Pennsylvania, actually on the western side of Pennsylvania. He works in the tech space um, and he's trying to be a doctor. Mm -hmm. You know, he's a big fan of the show, communicates with us, as I already told you. Um, is there anything you want to jump into or you want to drop before we? let y'all listen to this great episode? No, I mean, I think it was just a really good conversation. For me, I was just excited to hear from one of the listeners. And, you know, I really hope that anybody who's listening in really takes to heart that we really want to talk with you all. We really, really appreciate your, your um, you know, the fact that you listen to the show um, and that you write in. And, you know, if you... Write in a question. We are more than happy to answer it or even have you on the show to answer it. So, All right. So, Alfred, please patch in this interview and um, we'll talk about it afterwards. So, Jamar, one of our faithful listeners, was good. I'm glad we finally connect, man. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Oh, man, we good, doing man. Doing good. Doing good. Good to finally yeah. put a face with the name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been a while. I've been around for a while, so I've been listening for for I don't know how many years. You know, <laughs> good to see you guys. Yeah. Wait, let's learn more about you. Where are you from, man? So I'm from Pittsburgh. I'm from uh, from you know the west of, uh, west side of uh, Pennsylvania. So we're like nestled into into the mountains. Yeah. So we we used to work in Central PA. We would hang out in Pittsburgh every now and then. Um, but, um, mm -hmm. I didn't know Pittsburgh was like that really. Um, yeah. but Pittsburgh really actually has a happening scene. Um, yeah, it's, it's, um, there's a lot going on now. There's a ton of construction right now, which mm -hmm. is driving everyone crazy, especially around my neighborhood. Um, but it's, it's really like blowing up, um, in some good ways. And there's a lot of tech companies coming here. There's a lot of people from like Cali moving here and New York are moving here. So they're buying a lot of properties. It's, it's getting interesting. Okay. All right. So where are you at right now? Like, what's what's the deal with you? I know you listen a lot. I know you're from Pittsburgh. You're obviously a Pittsburgh Steelers fan, I'm assuming. Um, what, what, yeah. what, what do you do? Like, what, what's, what, what do you do for a living? How do you, what's your normal nine so, to five like? Uh, so right now, uh, like I'm, I'm at work right now. So I'm, I'm a systems engineer. Uh, I have mm. a background in uh, computer information systems. I have a master's degree in that. And I graduated from Robert Morris University, which is like right out on the highway outside of Pittsburgh, outside of Pittsburgh by the airport. Um, I also played um, college football. I played sports though, young. 
musician, saxophone. Um, oh, you're a renaissance man. Yeah, you're a renaissance man, yo. <laughs> you can do it yeah. all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like to it's a it's a gift and a curse, I guess. Because <laughs> you can, when you can do it all, you don't know what to do. Right, so, right. That's right. trauma <laughs> surgery in a nutshell. Jack, jack of all trades, yeah. master of none. You see, heard that, see, everybody? That's, that's, uh, he said he ain't the master. Yeah. No, nah, I'm not the master. <laughs> and nah, cue, you just do. and cue the last <laughs> dragon right there, man. All right, Leroy, who's the one and only master? I Yeah, right. So, yeah, so I did. I do photography. Photography is kind of new for me, um, and I've been been taking on a lot of side gigs for that, and have a website and all that stuff. But so I'm trying to make some money on the side for that, and pay for like classes and things like that. Yeah. Okay. So uh, you're my, um, full, my full. No, go ahead. Yep. No, my full time is just systems engineering, and uh, and then that's on the side. I usually do. The photography on the weekends. They know you record on company time. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, it's my and, lunch uh, break. <laughs> well, we ain't gonna tell them. They don't listen I'm to the show. Don't worry. Say it's your lunch break, yo. Say it's your lunch break. They don't, they don't listen to the show. Don't worry about it. They're not watching. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. They're not watching. It's all good. But yep, yeah, that's me. So you write in a lot. Um, the last time you texted us. <laughs> Uh, you had a couple of questions. What's what's kind of like the most pressing question that you have for us? Um, so I guess the most pressing is since I'm a pre med right now. Um, in on this, I've been I started this journey in like 2017 after my dad had a kidney transplant. He's mm-hmm. a diabetic. He has you know all these things going on. He's a veteran, and so the VA you know, basically poked him up with a kidney. But throughout that time, he, he went from like 220, 230 pounds to like 160 pounds mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, waiting for a kidney, going through dialysis. And it was just like, like seeing that this surgeon, it, I mean, he walked in and it was just kind of like, this is what we're going to do. This is what's going to happen. Um, there was just fear of confidence and a uh, sense of um, like rest and, you know, you can Rest assured, he'll be taken care of. Uh, and so we saw my dad going through that. And so I started pre med in um, 2017, just been going on this. And and since like COVID started, a lot of things have like fell off. Like I had, you know, I had a schedule, I had a plan. It was like do shadowing, get my classes done, do some clinical stuff. Et cetera, et cetera. But you know, COVID came and volunteering and all that stuff fell fell away. So I'm just at the point where I'm trying to get these things together, but I'm also trying to keep up that motivation, that determination to to continue, continue, and keep my why, um, you know, in front of me and go for that. And so I was just, I mean, mostly I want to know, have you? Guys, either of you ever experienced that moment where you felt your why was slipping away, mm. and how did you get back on track? Mm. That's a really good question. That's a deep question. Whoa, yeah, that's a Jamal. deep question, right? Dag, man, all right. <laughs> man, Alfred, you the thinking. <laughs> I, you know. I, told, I told you, me and Alfred. Oh it's my our god, would you? You just please? focus on Jamar. Me and oh, Alfred, yeah. we got it. Something. You just answer Jamar's question. <laughs> You see, you see how she do, Jamar? She gonna answer your question. I'll go from there. No, I mean, I hear this question a lot, actually, from the pre meds that I work with. You know, um, it's a really, it's it's a really deep question. Like we mentioned, um, I got this question actually from somebody uh, while I was at the Student National Medical Association. A pre med came up to me and asked me, kind of like. You know, how do you stay motivated? Because there's so many things going on. And it's really, I'll tell you this, it's really hard. It's very individualized, right? You have to keep going back to your original thought of why you wanted to do this and think about whether or not that reason is still relevant to you, right? So you mentioned your dad, you know, going through getting a kidney transplant 
your interaction um, with the surgeon, you know, just kind of this air of confidence, everything was going to be okay. Um, you have to keep going back to that moment because it seems like that moment was very poignant in your life, right? That that moment um, kind of culminated or at least summarized all of the things that you were really feeling in terms of being motivated to go into medicine. And so you just have to keep remembering that not every moment is going to be like that, right? But that it doesn't mean that even when there are moments like COVID and not being able to shadow and not being able to do all those things that will propel you forward, it doesn't mean that all those all moments are going to be like that either. You know, in other words, you're going to have yeah. good moments and you're going to have bad moments, but it's up to you to kind of pull from those good moments to get as many good moments going forward um, from from here on. Because I'm, I'm telling you, you know, as an OB, I can tell you I loved, you know, delivering babies when I got to my rotation, to my OB rotation, something I never thought that would interest me. But when I did my first delivery, I was like, man, this is really cool. But you know, the thing about being an OB is that OB is great. You know, you bring life into the world, but when there's tragedy on the labor and delivery floor, it's tragic. You know, it's really, really mm-hmm. tragic. And you got to stop and think about, you know, is this really what I want to do? You know, but when I think about all the tragedy that does happen on the labor and delivery floor, I also got to think about all the joy that I get. Um, And it's okay to have, you know, to have joy um, after tragedy. And so just remembering the good and bad and just, you know, holding on to that good. And hopefully that will help your motivation not slip away. For me, I keep it as simple as I applied to medical school twice um, or I applied to medical. Yeah, I applied to medical school twice. And in between that time when I applied the first time and then I applied the second time with some difficult times for me and Looking back, it really was a chapter in this story of Nee Darko. And that's the way I look at it, look at this is you got to look at yourself, your life, almost like a book. And there are certain chapters that are already completed. Right. So for you, that would be up until high school, up until college. And now there's a portion of or a chapter right now that's currently being written. How else is the rest of your life, the rest of your book going to be written? So for me, when I was struggling, man, I, I don't know if you remember the TV show ER. But there was a TV show called yeah. ER that was on. Man, I stopped watching that show. Um, around that time, that's when Grey's Anatomy started coming on. I refused to watch that um, because I was embarrassed, right? Like I had told everybody up until that point that I was going to get into, well, I was going to be a doctor. And now I'm struggling. I, I, you know, I got rejected from all the schools. I didn't know what to do. And I had shame. Um, but somebody, somebody sat me down and said, listen, like, Whether you take two years off, three years off, or maybe even four years off, the most important thing is that this is your story and you can't compare yourself to somebody else or you can't compare yourself, which is what I was doing, to other classmates or colleagues who were in medical school and, you know, you end up either being jealous or you feel shameful that you haven't been able to get to that point, but they have. And um, that was a really interesting perspective. But once I was able to realize that this is really Nee Darko's story, And overall, when you look from a 30,000 foot view, this is literally just going to be a small blip in my, Mm -hmm. you know, in my story. Um, It really changed my perspective and really got me to focus back down to why I wanted to be a doctor. It also forced me to be a lot more, um, I think, strategic with the schools that I applied to. It it forced me to be more um, mature about the answer of why do I want to be a doctor, Mm -hmm. right? Because I think I was, I would always say that I wanted to help people. And it's like, well, you can help people in so many different ways. I was never challenged as to what does that mean to be a doctor? Why do you want to be a doctor? Um, So I would say for you is just remember that this is a book that's written on Jamar. There's a long ways to go. There's many more chapters to go. Comparing yourself to other people can be very dangerous. And, you know, sometimes we go through potholes and detours and it just makes for a better story. But the most important thing is to remember why you wanted to be a doctor. Remember that as your North Star and go from there. Like Childish Gambino is his North Star. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I agree with that. Have a proverbial cigarette. (laughs) I'm not advocating cigarette smoking, everyone. I'm a doctor. The proverbial cigarette and just kind of move on. Right. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) 
the I, most I get that. well i have yeah, a question i have a question for you jamar do you think you would make a pretty good doctor so yes um i'll put that off front yeah uh, but there's often times where i'm just like you know is this is this me is this who i am um and part of it is and a lot of people like I meet, like my manager here uh, that at my job I have now, he knows I'm doing this. And he's really like, you know, he's like, yeah, go for it. I think, you you know, he always tells me. And so we have a nice little understanding about like if I have class or whatever like that, I get to work with him a lot. So we're cool. But um, a lot of it, a lot of the times when I'm like, I don't know if I can do it or if I should is... Like there are other things that are going on that um, I see and kind of like pull me towards like business opportunities, mm-hmm. things like that, you know. Um, and that was another question that I had for you guys, which is basically how did you do So if I'm going to like medical school, let's say next year, I mean, what do you stay away from? What do you, um, what's, what do you feel like okay to like um, jump into? Um, there's like a lot of different opportunities. Like I work with my um, nephew in the uh, market, marketing agency. I'm I'm the director of IT operations. There's a lot that's going on there, um, but trying not to get too sucked in and pulled away from my dream. Um, just trying to manage that. And I'm like, you know, I could do this and, and get going now, or I can hold off and and continue pursuing medical school and becoming a doctor. And a lot of times where I'm like, I don't know if this is me, um, it, it's due to that. But I wanted, I wanted to do it. I know I want to do it. It's just, I guess it's the timing. The timing. And I'm, I'm turning like 34 in two weeks. And I'm just like. Yo, we went to school. We went to school. Together, we went to school with someone comparing. in their 50s. We went to actually multiple people in our school were in their late 40s to mid 50s. So Mm -hmm. you can do this. I would definitely say, listen, when you get back down to your why, this is where you're going to have to have that come to Jesus proverbial meeting, that childish Gambino meeting with yourself is what is it that you absolutely can't? What is it that you absolutely can see yourself doing day in and day out? And if that has to do with medicine, if that has something to do with being a doctor, then I think that might be your calling. If you see yourself kind of handling multiple things, you know, being a doctor and doing something else, that's okay. But the most important thing is, is that if you choose that path to become a doctor, then you have to remember that this is, you know, 100% and nothing else can conf- can really pull you or distract you from that goal until you get that MD or DO degree. Once you get into the game, that's the thing I always tell everybody. Once you get into the game, right, which is graduating from medical school, and if you decide that you want to practice clinically finishing residency, then you can start to kind of juggle things in your life, like, you know, doing multiple things, maybe being a doc outside the box. But you got to remember, like, we, there's one of, uh, you know, we're part of an organization called Tour for Diversity, and one of the things that they say is when you're in medical school, if you are, what is it, if you are working in medical school, Mm-hmm. If you're working in medical school, then you're working your way, way out. out of medical school, which means that you should always be focused mm-hmm. on getting through and graduating. Um, so that's what I would say is once you get in, just make sure you want to stay as focused as possible. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. And that makes sense. Being a doctor is kind of something that I can see more clearly than anything else. Mm-hmm. Um you know, as much as I do other things, photography, and I can play music and all that stuff, but I can see further along from being a doctor than I can in other things. But obviously, I don't have to get rid of, I don't have to stop being a photographer. Because um, it, it's, yeah, it's real, man. Because I tell you right now, like, you know, like, I'm not gonna lie to you, like a lot of things, a lot of the things that I really like to do fell by the wayside. Like I, I like running, like I like competitive running. I was just lazy. And but I look back like Mm -hmm. if I continued running while I was in med school, I don't think that would actually change too much in how I would study. It just would have I would have to be a little bit more structured Um, for someone like you, Mm -hmm. where you have things that you actually enjoy. They may be hobbies or what have you. That is all. If you put that all together, that makes Jamar. Right. So photography, maybe some marketing here and there. The key thing is you can do all of that. Just don't let it take you off of the main goal which is graduating. But if you like don't do those 
whatsoever, that's also not you also, right? So you just got to be mm-hmm. cognizant that it's it's a little bit of balance, um, but just also know that the most important thing, the main thing in your life, if this is what you want to do once you get in, is is medicine. Yeah. You know, nothing okay. happens in a bubble, right? Nothing happens yeah. in a bubble. So, you know, I also gave a talk actually at SNMA um, this past weekend talking about, you know, creating your pre-med identity. And one of the things, you know, that was on this slide of a whole bunch of characteristics that people have about themselves is habits, hobbies, you know, faith, you know, race, ethnicity, like all these things that make up who we are, right? And so being a pre-med isn't just about grades and MCAT scores, right? You have to create an identity about yourself. Like, who are you? What value do you bring to the table? Because, you know, more than just GPA and MCAT scores, I'm going to need you to do something else, right? I'm going to need you to bring something else to the table because everybody brings their MCAT scores and GPA to the table, right? And so nothing is happening in a bubble. Like, all of these things you know, that you like to do are happening despite the fact that you still want to go into medicine, right? So the desire to go into medicine has not caused you to put by the wayside everything else that you love to do. So is there a world where you could be in medical school and still maintain your, you know, your photography skills? Absolutely there is, you know, but just like Nee said, you know, just make sure that you know that this investment of going into medical school is something that once you invest in it, you're going to want some sort of return on your investment, right? At the very least, you're going to want some sort of return on your investment. And that's going to mean you have to do the things that you need to do in order to complete that medical education so that eventually you can capitalize on getting that return on investment. Mm -hmm. So, and There's also a world where you finish everything that you want to do and you realize how you can put it all together to be very creative. You know, as he mentioned, being a doc outside the box, being just very creative. Maybe you can put everything together in a way that no one has ever put before. Um, And so that might be something that you kind of think about over the years as you're going through, you know, this journey. Whether you decide to apply to medical school now or you decide to apply to medical school five years from now, that ultimately is up to you and all of the things that are going on in your life. Um, But, you know, if it's something that you absolutely want to do and you think you'll be good at it, which is a very important question, that's why I asked you, um, then, yeah, by all means, I would say go for it. Because chances are you're not going to pursue something that you don't think you're going to be good at. Yeah, that's very true. So, and I also know, you know, fourth years, I'm in third year, they need headshots. So I got the camera. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. Camera See, that's, ready. That's, that's a little side I'll business right there. I'm ready. That's it. Yeah. So yeah, l- yeah. L- let me ask you a question. <laughs> how, how did you find out about Docs Outside the Box? How did you find us? Ooh. So I think it was, so at the time when I told you I started all this, um, I was listening, I was trying to find some some different things because at first I was like, I don't know if I could do this. I don't think I'm smart enough. Um, all my standardized testing and all that stuff was like mediocre. I did, you know, I did good in class and all that stuff. But I was looking for some podcasts and some inspiration and some testimonials and things like that. And I found um, the pre-med years by Dr. Ryan mm-hmm. Gray. I don't know mm-hmm. if you ever listened to him, but yeah, we he had know some Ryan. good stuff. Yeah. And he had a few other things. Up. And then in that search, I also found your podcast um, as well. And so I just add, I subscribed and added it. I hadn't listened to it for a while um, until um, I can't even think of how long after it, I started listening to the pre med years. But then, you know, I was like, all right, let me give it a shot. And I was looking at the title of the episode. I was like, all right. And then you, you, I mean, and then I realized it wasn't just medicine. It wasn't just about being a doctor. I know, like, there's some good stuff. This is, these are really things I can use, even if I'm not in medical school or pursuing medicine. And so I just kept listening. And and usually now, what I do is just kind of like, I'll list, I'll binge, I'll binge listen mm. um, in a week, and then I'll wait a couple of weeks and I'll binge listen. 
Dax outside yeah. the box and chill. Yeah, that's how I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. All right. Well, much. that that's uh, really helpful because that helps us to understand how our listeners, um, yeah. you know, consume the show and stuff. And um, this was dope, man. Yeah. It was really, it's been really great, you know, for us to kind of communicate with you through Textiful and for you to let us know what's going on and some of the ideas. Um, I still haven't decided if I'm going to include your book. <laughs> in the 12 books that I have uh, no I'm not saying I'm not going to read it I'm just saying for the 12 maybe books for no, next no, year. maybe for next year we'll see um, <laughs> and we'll go from there yeah yeah no that's cool because I had uh, I started um, I got the audio book uh, Atomic Habits because mm, bro, bro Atomic Habits yeah. is a great book yeah <laughs> it's definitely it's great so it's that and then I have um, the one I suggested um, indistractable, indistractable and then another one I'm listening to is Outlived it just came out mm-hmm. and so it's pretty interesting so it might be something you know later on you might want to include yeah but, okay cool cool yeah, thanks. hey Jamar thank you very much we appreciate you listening to the show we also appreciate you now participating in the show so yeah. listen we can't wait for you yeah. to listen to future episodes we're going to change things up a little bit make them a little bit um, we always change things up on the show but we're looking to make the show a little bit easier to digest so stay tuned for some upcoming uh, changes that I think you'll really appreciate yeah you know I'll be around I'll be listening <laughs> alright man alright man we'll talk later <laughs> alright okay yeah, <laughs> alright we are back so that was a great segment. Yeah. Um, I love having these type of conversations. Jamar, you are dope. Thank you so much for listening to the show for so long. I hope yeah. you all got an opportunity to hear, you know, from all the different types of uh, people who listen to the show. We have pre-meds. We have medical students. We have um, doctors, obviously. And we have people who are not even in the medical field yeah. who listen to the show also. So that was really fun to connect with him. So. Yeah. I mean, it's always great to just kind of hear what people are doing, um, especially him as a non-traditional student. I think the reassurance that needs to um, the reassurance that non-traditional students need in order to understand that they bring a lot of value to the table because they are non-traditional is something that I think a lot of non-traditional students just don't get. Right. Like they always are concerned about, well, no, because you know, I haven't been in school or I had to, you know, take extra classes or I had to, you know, I'm changing my career. And it's like, oh, my gosh, like you bring so much to the table that a medical school is going to absolutely love you because you have a perspective that most people who are going into medical school don't have because they go straight from high school to college right into medical school with, you know, very little, you know, experience outside of education, their own education. So this is um, this was a great great discussion that we have with them. Jamar, you're dope, man. And um, you're going to get to medical school. And I'm glad that you decided to roll with us. I'm glad we're, you know, we are people and stuff. You like what we talk about. And it obviously he is going to be a pre-med outside of the box. You know, pre-med outside the box. That's what I'm talking about. Coming soon from Dr. Renee. And he, he I likes to stole that idea. He likes how we talk. <laughs> you know, we like how he talks. And um, <laughs> yo, you're going to make it. So yep. everybody, please make sure you text us below. Offer, please put below. You can always text us at 833-230-2860. We hope you guys enjoy this episode. Please also communicate with us on IG. And um, we're going to catch you on the next episode. Don't forget to watch Doctors for Hire on YouTube. That's right. We'll catch you guys on the next one, y'all. Peace.